And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to the Valley of the Judged. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have my good brother in arms, the man of a thousand runes, the CEO of Zadari Enterprises, and the bane of my fucking existence, good brother, good brother Xanatrix. And consider this one a little bit of us tying up a loose end. We're so, going to do it in a crazy and stylish fashion. <laughs> so, some, so a while back, we did, we, we did a Valley of the Judge episode on Avatar Legends, which, is, which yes, I am fully aware that it, is, that it has reached product we love and gotten over $1 million on Kickstarter. Um, to that I say, golf clap? Golf clap. Um, we, on the other, for, mo for a lot of people, it's been, ge it's been getting a lot of hype. A lot of people are going, Hey, there's an avatar RPG. It's the first, it's the first avatar thing in a, in a few years, in a few years. Will we have an alternative to the net, to the Netflix abomination? That probably isn't going to happen. Except, etc., etc., etc. But we here in the temple always go by a different beat because we did not care one fucking iota for <laughs> for Avatar Legends if its quick start is any indication. As a small reminder to everybody who might be watching, that review, that Valley of the Judged, was stemmed off of an even earlier Valley of the Judged having to do with a Dice Breakers article of Magpie Games talking about them getting the Avatar IP for a tabletop. Mm. And then we got the quick start and our conclusion was, it's not an Avatar game. It's a game with an Avatar coat of paint. The sandbox that they presented is not to tell stories within the world of Avatar, but to tell whatever the hell stories you want, and then paint a little bit of Avatar over it if you like it. Yes. And the, and ult and ultimately that is that that is the that is the issue that is the issue that w that we had now to go to go over to go over the I think we can go over a few of the cliff notes to set the stage as far as our as far as our major problems with um, Avatar Legends. Okay. The core one that I had that I had said in the Dicebreaker article and in the Legends Quick Start. Mm -hmm. Was was that they was that they were was that instead of trying to make a game that used the world of Avatar as a sandbox, they wanted to make a, they wanted to make a game that was trying to replicate the kind of stories seen in the cartoons, and to a certain extent the um, comics. But most people going into this, I say the people going into this who have read the comics or some of the novel or some of the novella, um, are in a minority. Yeah, most people who are interested in the novellas and the and the comics probably did not care about the TTRPG. They've got the other the other sources of entertainment already. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I was gonna say, and, and then the few who are who do overlap probably are not interested in this specific TTRPG. Yeah. Now, putting putting be. Now beyond that, the um, the much the much touted the much touted balance system was was a was a case of the sh of needing full needing micro sentences instead of the single words that they utilized. Um, the play the playbooks were incredibly generic. Um, bending bending is a and through its through their technique system is treated as a feat. Their reasoning for why no one is allowed to play the Avatar was incredibly baffling, and oh, and more and more than anything else, a lot of the a lot of the a lot of the mechanics and a lot of the theming was them superimposing masks onto this. It it is less of a is less of a Avatar RPG as much as it is a Avatar hack of the previous game masks. A new generation, which yeah. 
as I as we mentioned last time, is all about the young superhero archetype. You know, Young Justice, X X Men, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Which uh is one was only one avenue that can be taken with um the with a setting like Avatar. Yeah, uh, and we we I guess hypothesized a little bit, did a little bit of spitballing as to why it became this way. Much of it probably stemmed from their personal crusade, uh, causing them to try and scrub out too many quote-unquote uh, isms. Because, as we discussed in the Dicebreaker article, and probably as, as vehemently as I always discuss these particularly non-traversy issues, uh, they, they wanted to take out all the bad stereotypes, not realizing that they themselves were the ones enforcing the bad stereotypes. So, in the end, they ended up with a blasé and milk toast game where everything was just too generic, where they said bending was not an integral part of your character story when in a setting like Avatar where having bending or not having bending is literally a step between being a first and second class citizen in many settings, uh, yeah, it, it very much does inform your story. So they, they basically botched the whole thing. But we're not discussing that today. Mm -hmm. No, you see... We had we had we had mentioned off and on, um, the that this that um and that a big hurdle that this was always going to have is that the idea of doing an Avatar RPG has been done many times over by fans for the last ten years, and this is this has been done through. Lit for I'd say almost every edition of D and D. I'm pretty sure if I dug deep enough, I could even find some OSR takes on the concept. I bet they exist. The OSR crowd would do it. Um, or just or just use a hack of flying swordsman. That could that could certainly work. That could certainly work <laughs> as well. Yeah, yeah, I could see the OSR crowd doing that too. It can be sometimes a little bit lazy. <laughs> um, well, re well, remember some of those OSR crowd. Think that think that you only need four classes and you can have an, and you can use that for any archetype. Oh. Mm, thinking not the strongest suit they have. Uh, we'll get we'll probably we'll probably end up dedicating an episode one of these days to our issues with the OSR. But <laughs> else? indeed. Um, and it's been it's been done in a, in in a baker's do a baker's dozen or two other systems include including some including some completely homebrew set setups that aren't drawing upon an existing rule set i've seen it done with fate i've seen it done with i've seen it done with the we've seen it done with dnd we've seen i've seen it done with um with the age system i've seen it i've seen it done with um with let with um weapons of the gods slash legends of the Wulin. I've seen it done with fucking anima. I've seen it done. Seen with it Roll done Master. in GURPS. Yeah, we've seen it done in GURPS. We've seen it done in Hero. Gross. Um, <laughs> GURPS or here GURPS or Hero. Either of those universal types wouldn't be my first choice, but more. But you do you. Um, <laughs> I've seen I've seen it done in Sa in Savage Worlds, which actually is a fairly good fit for this kind of thing. And but today, and so and so on and so forth. But today, the version that we're using it the is Legend of the Elements, which originally started as a as an Avatar hack using powered by the Apocalypse. And I specifically wanted to bring up this version to show that, despite my issues with powered by the Apocalypse as a rule set. And that, and that it is not as universal of a of a setup as some people think it is. It can something like Avatar can be done in this system, and I wanted to bring and this up to contrast where Legends shat the bed. Yeah, essentially, to get the best contrast, we took one powered by the apocalypse Avatar 
game play. At least that's what it claims to be. And we are now comparing it to its better uh, generic cousin. <laughs> now, when the, when when the th when this went on Kickstarter, obviously it had to drop a lot of the avatar naming. So, so a lot of the naming that you might be familiar with um, is not going to be there. But that's a case of legally distinct, the best kind of distinct. Like technically correct, the best kind of correct. And I can think of no better. I can think of no better place to to. Now, uh, one other thing that I feel I feel I need to mention, um, Avatar Legends obviously is going to ha is going to have it beat out in the production values. That's that was never in doubt. Whereas Legend of the Elements is all a one man job. That man being Mark's Mar uh, Max Haravu. Sorry if I mispronounced your name. I I, I think it's a Javier, but uh, I, I I haven't spoken French since high school, so. Yeah, and I'm not calling on I'm not calling on Maddie to do, to do this so late at night. He might be happy to do it anyway, but uh, we'll leave him to his peace. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um. So instead of, instead of going into instead of going into this page by page like we did with the like we did with the with led with the legends quick start because that was because this is 229 pages and we do not have that kind of patience we're o we're only going to be covering the big outline material um in in essence what we're covering is the basics including how they deal with moves the playbooks and the fact that there are even sub playbooks uh and we're going to use those to see how legend of the elements presents its avatar sandbox is this a world based based on what is going to be legally distinct from but recognizable as avatar uh where you can tell whatever stories you want to tell or is this a world where you're trying to replicate the stories of the shows and re uh, related materials? Mm -hmm. uh, now, Legend of the Elements solves that solves that particular problem by use by um, taking a taking a very clear um, stance on what on what it wants to do. It uh, there's not a whole lot of setting mater material within the book, and that's because it's operating under the gentleman's handshake. That you're already somewhat familiar with the concept of Avatar, and you can and you can fill in those blanks yourself. There, there's even a section at the very beginning of this book, which says the largest inspirations for this game are the Nickelodeon cartoons Avatar: The Last Airbender and The Legend of Korra. More so, Avatar than Korra, but that's a different story. <laughs> this game is not associated with those shows, but they are an excellent guideline for the tone, style, and pacing in Legend of the Elements. Other inspirations can be found in the mediography at the end of this book, and some of the inspirations there are some pretty recognizable media. Uh, Full Metal Alchemist, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, uh, Swordsman 2, probably more recognizable to Monk and I than most people. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Romance of the Three Kingdoms, Journey to the West, Mushishi, and uh, Codex Alera, novels by Jim Butcher. Mm -hmm. the, these are the media inspirations for the type of game that Max is trying to give us. And I think that's a wonderful spread of different elements you could pull from at any point. Uh, he also had a, a nice spread of role-playing games that he didn't necessarily pull inspiration from directly but used as a way to shape how he wanted his game to turn out. Mm -hmm. uh, games such as Anima Prime, Dungeon World, Feng Shui, Inverse World, Legends of the Wulin slash Weapons of the Gods, which we mentioned earlier, Monster Hearts, Sagas of the Icelanders of all things, <laughs> which really <laughs> caught me by surprise, uh, Wushu, and of course... Apocalypse World, which is where all the powered by the apocalypse hacks come from. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes when it comes to setting up the outline, 
um given what given what given what i meant given um, what I meant given what I mentioned a lot of a lot of the stuff that you would see in a powered by the apocalypse book is going to be present here playbooks moves the the idea of the idea of moves for di for the players and moves for the GM or in this case the master of ceremonies or MC apparently he likes hammer pants I don't <laughs> you don't want your own pair of parachute pants not unless I'm parachuting. <laughs> Don't think they work that way, Monk. But okay. Yep. But after after going into after going into the t the two roles and the like, then we get then we get into um we get a brief description of each of the um play of each of the playbooks. And there's there are significantly more playbooks here than there were in Legend of the than there were in um Legends. Our Legends had. Six very generic playbooks mm -hmm. with descriptors such as the bold. What? The bold can be a marvelous variation of different people, but the bold was a playbook. Yeah. Whereas in Legend of the Elements, we have 11 playbooks. Um, Air Shaper, Aristocrat, Earth Shaper, Fire Shaper, Hunter, Monk, Peasant, Scholar, Spirit Shaper, Warrior, and Water Shaper. I have to say that description of Monk actually does uh, does you some uh, some some service there, Monk. Uh, a calm soul in tune with the world. Being in tune with the world doesn't necessarily mean you agree with it. That's not mentioned, but still. <laughs> I'm more. I I take more offense to the whole calm soul thing, but that does fit the stereotype. I mean, your whole ice motif, monk. Yeah, you're you're pretty calm on the surface. Yeah, but then then again, um, you've seen what happens to ships when they end up when they end up getting on the wrong side of ice flows. Yes, yes, I have. Now. Something else that this game does that Avatar Legends did not is we have sub-playbooks to represent specialized character types. Uh, and some of those sub-playbooks are also recognizable, such as the Metal Shaper or the Lightning Shaper. So the same, the same sub-playbooks are there. Uh, uh, I didn't look directly at it, but I'm assuming the I'm, I'm assuming the shaping master is a uh, is basically the avatar XB. I be I believe so, but we'll we'll um we'll be del we'll be delving into into those with t into those as we get further on. There yes. are there, but before we can get into any of the play into playbooks, there are a few things that we do have to um we do have to delve into f first and foremost. Um. Obvious, obviously, there's the there's the standard setup with stats. The stat names may change, but the way it's set up ha does not. Um, in this case, the st I remember I remember us having some issues with the description for some of the stats in Legends. I don't have that much that much of an issue with th with this case. Um, what we the stats that we have for le for Legend for Legend of the Elements are natural, hot, solid, keen, and fluid. No. As a side note, mm -hmm. uh, in base Apocalypse World and in Monster Hearts, uh, those games use the stat hot as a term for, for attractiveness. This is not that. Mm -hmm. This is more a, 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 refer, a, a reference to the temperament of the character. Yes. Um. Natural is is more about be, is more about being what more about wi being well connected. Your um your diplomancer stat, as well as uh, with with some with some elements of wisdom and self discipline. Yep. Um. Solid is is your is your um big guy stat. <laughs> um. Re reliable and strong are the two uh descriptor. In the initial out uh, outlook, there 
Essentially, uh, if you're playing some sort of mighty glacier, this is likely the stat you're focused in. Mm -hmm. um, it would also fit the yellow ranger archetype in a lot of Sentai. Yes. Or uh, some of the more... Um, some of the more down-to-earth writers. Mm. Main writers, especially. Why am I thinking of birth? <laughs> I don't know. I think birth might be solid, but he's also a bit hot in there, depending on... If we're talking uh, Date specifically. Yeah. Uh, he, he He's both solid and hot, but that's... Rails at that point, Monk. <laughs> Um, Keen is, is the, sh is the sharp people, and that's basically a combination of intelligence and, um, perception. They're your Machiavellian glasses for anyone who watches, uh, Log Horizon or mm -hmm. reads it. Yep. And Fluid are the, are the mobile and, gr the, are referred to as mobile and graceful in complete control of their motions. Um. Of their motions, yeah. not their emotions. Mm -hmm. Just to just to enunciate there. Yeah. Um, of course, then we then we have the we have the basic move we have the basic moves, um, which are about are about what you would expect them to be. There's not a, there's not a whole lot of need to go into them, but then we go into um, the idea of chi and oath moves. Which is the, which is the first um the first the first presentation of chi in the book. Yes. Um. When it says when playing through your chakras causes trouble for the other for the other player characters gain one chi. When you take advantage of a tag or environment tag when triggering a move after seeing the roll you may give one chi to the MC to upgrade the result. When and when a MC character respects you and you make a move against them, spend that re spend that respect to upgrade the result to the next tier of results. Um, you can spend five chi at any point to take an option from your playbook's improvement list. And so, I'd say I'd say when it comes to it, chi it chi is a um, is equal equal parts a a drama point system and advancement. It, it uh, reminds me of um, the the point system from uh, Tenra Bancho's scenes. Um, you're think you're thinking of I Key and Kiai. Yes. I I can I can certainly see that. Um, fortunately, there isn't the cap on it. Yeah. That, ten that Tenra had. I know why Tenra did it. I still, I'm just still not a fan of it. Don't want people to suddenly skyrocket too quickly. Mm -hmm. Not to mention, you don't want people hitting 108 karma in a single scene. <laughs> that would happen. Yeah. Oh, you did so well in that scene that the that the game master is taking your character away now. Bye. Um. Of course, the other the other the other drama pool would be um, fortune. That's that's talked alongside um, player tags. Yeah. Um, because all characters have a fortune value determined by their playbook and in, and is increased by certain moves. Anytime a PC would be ta would be tagged, they can spend one fortune to ignore it. Um, mm -hmm. And it's this is restored to the maximum at the beginning of each session. I um. It, it's very tempting to refer to fortune as hit, as hit points, but I don't. But I don't see it that way. Especially, especially since tags aren't just damage. Yeah, they're they're effects. Mm -hmm. Now, then they go into then they go a little bit further into chi and its relationship to um, chakras, and. The the they give a, a they give a approximation that it's a reserve of energy, but they don't. But they intentionally go non-specific with it. Probably probably a smart move. Um, and when it comes to get when it comes to getting chi, there are four ways to do it. Either roll a six or less on a move, f 
fulfill an oath, cause trouble or tension by role-playing to your chakras, and, uh, and other moves provided by playbooks. It can be spent to get to, as I mentioned before, upgrade a move result from, say, a 6 or less to a 7, 8, or 9 result, or a 7, 8, or 9 result to a 10 plus result, as long as you're taking advantage of one of the target's tags or a relevant environment tag. Or you can spend 5G to pick an option from the improvement list. Um, chakras are pairs of adjectives that players should use to guide how they roleplay their character. Each character starts with two chakras, providing four separate adjectives that they can play to. In many cases, chakras are just guidelines for different ways that an archetype can act in this, jo in this genre, but they all have a side that can cause trouble between player characters. When this tension or trouble arises, each player character whose chakra is conflicting gains one chi. Um, I look at... I. Given the fact that it's that it's um single word that it's single word pairs, um, one would say one would one could easily argue that we're hypocritical, get um given that we probably we I th I don't I think I can speak for you on the fact that we that the this chakra system is prefer is preferable to the balance system. Uh, yeah, the balance system didn't even make sense in some cases because with the two sides of the scale that you're supposed to be moving towards or away from, uh, sometimes the two values weren't even in conflict. Mm -hmm. It's one of those things that's, that... Was, I, had, I had said that if, you're, if you want to do that kind of thing, you need to have it that it's more than just a single word. Yeah. Or, or, give, or give people multiple, ba multiple balances that they have to deal with. Yeah. Whereas this system, these these aren't the the chakras themselves are not necessarily opposing within the character. Mm -hmm. So, you have a lot more free form freedom. Yeah. Um, then we get into oaths and respect. Is characters are bound to each other by oaths, which are promises to other characters to do something. A few oaths are established at the end of character creation when your backstory gets filled out. And you'll be making oaths in play through conversation as a result of moves like speak honorably. Um, when an oath is fulfilled, the person the oath was made to gains respect for the fulfilling character. Respect is a binary state. You either have it or you don't. When a character respects another, it makes it easier for them to work together. Um, and respect isn't necessarily mutual. When an oath is made, the promising character writes it down under their oaths. Um, including to whom the oath was made, when it's fulfilled, the they now respect the fulfilling character, and the, that fulfilling character gains one chi. When and no, when um, the oath is broken, the oath breaker rolls the associated move. Um, and let's see when I'm trying to see if it goes. And of, co of course, as we met, as I mentioned before, respect can be spent to improve to improve a m to improve a move. So, in this regard, we have we have further. Div this is st this is still in that na in that um, narrative mechanic that's supposed to be that in um, Legends was largely rooted in the balance thing. Yeah. But here, it's split among mul among multiple angles. Instead of that, ba instead of the balance being the key thing that determ that determines how you're going to be play how what um, motifs you're going to be playing to with your character, you have mul you have multiple op you have multiple options. Yeah, and these multiple options also present more and more uh, role playing threads. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the chakras are one, uh, the oaths are another. Uh, keep choosing when to spend the respect of the person you ha you have to as you use a move against them is a third. Mm -hmm. There may be a reason you don't want to do that. Um, and there's even a, a small section here that says respect can be won or lost as a result of the narrative conditions, but to avoid trivializing trivializing the mechanic, it should only be changed if there is a drastic change in the nature of the relationship between the characters. So. Yes, you can make an oath and fulfill that oath, and now you have respect and a, and a chi point. Mm -hmm. uh, but 
you can you can also just win that respect other ways whether you've done something particularly well and it makes sense within the narrative and losing it without deliberately moving against the person who has that respect for you is harder than it looks there has to be a drastic shift this this is all very good for making uh, lasting impressions between characters mm -hmm. which is great for a narrative game yeah um, at, and once again, since backstory was mentioned, that's obviously the next se the next section. Um, at the end of character creation, all players would go around and introduce their characters to each other, then fill out the backstory questions on each on each of the playbooks um, to establish some starting oaths and respect, then help flesh out the way characters know each other before um, conversation begins. Basically, session zero kind of things. Um, yeah. If backstory is part of the playbook concerned with the past, then there's mastery, which is concerned with the far future. A common goal for members of all the playbooks is to find a master to train with. Whenever, whenever any playbook trains with a master of their discipline, they trigger their mastery move, which permanently changes some function of the character. If players find another master after they've already trained with one, the move doesn't trigger again. Um, in that case, the MC should write some new move unique to the character and their situation. So if, if someone's made it, i.e. if someone's trained with two masters, they should be familiar with who, with who that character is and what they want. Um, I, I do appreciate the, I do appreciate the mastery mechanic here because it gives, it gives something to chase. Yeah, it's a goal. Mm -hmm. Um... And and obviously, beyond finding that master and training with them and getting that mastery move and improving that way, uh, you still have the improvements you can take using chi. And uh, honestly, this everything here, including the oaths, the backstories, etc., give some sort of hook to continue following whatever narrative threads you've you've created. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Since we mentioned since we mentioned improvement, that's the, that's the other thing. And aside aside from how you get it, it's not too far removed from the way playbook improvement works in other Powered by the Apocalypse games. Except for maybe the option for an animal companion. I don't know that every Powered by the Apocalypse has animal companions. No, that no. It's it's a case of you can either you can either you can either um boot you can either boost a boost stats. Um, get get boost moves. Get yourself more moves. Get more chak. Get more chakra. Um, and of course, after you take five of the normal improvements, you can choose um, advanced improvements in the same way. Um, they did. They of course do have a thing on animal companions, which they st they um they only have one stat animal, which is always at plus one. Um, it's meant to be a mini playbook essentially this is this is your momo the the flying lemur or you know your your uh flying sky bison mm -hmm. this is this is your your this is your animal companion uh from from somewhere in the show or that the, that that big ass lizard crocodile that um june had <laughs> yeah yeah And they they have they have their own set of they have their own set of moves that can that can be that can be learned as well, um, and this this bring now the section after that was cosmetic details which I don't think we need to go into, um, but that brings us to the playbooks. So the first one that they have is is Air Shaper, um, which is ve is very clearly meant to meant to be your meant to be your Airbenders. Yep. Oh. Uh, I, w I will note that all of the playbooks are in alphabetical order, so it wasn't like this was exactly planned. It was just a nice coincidence. Mm -hmm. um, now the when it comes to when it, 
when it comes to the sh when it comes to the chakras they have, it's emotional and sensitive, fickle and indecisive, hasty and quick to react, and spacey and whimsical. So of course so you, you choose. To... Mm -hmm. Yeah, you choose one, two of those four uh, particular chakra pairs. Mm -hmm. And oh, they start with zero maximum fortune. Wow. Well, um, best best learn how best learn how to dodge. I mean, you're an air shaper. Mm -hmm. it, it also has four different uh, stat layouts too. That's yeah. nice. It's a, it's a it's a nice setup. the The stat layout setup is pretty common for PBTA games. Yeah, but I will note that with um, Avatar Legends, they only gave one layout for each playbook. That was also a quick start. But actually, no, I take that back because I've seen, I've seen quick starts of other PBTA games that did have multiple layouts. So I can't, Some, I can't go with something that. worth pointing out. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying. Let's see. Then, when it comes to backstory, the two the two questions that it have is, it has is you made blank a promise a long time ago, but have made no progress. What is it? Uh, and blank is a close friend. We respect each other. Their mastery move is that when they trained with a master air shaper, um, they can add they they can add to their list of options with move with intention it, as roll your next move with natural instead of its usual stat. Um, actually really useful to mm -hmm. be able to sub in natural which tends to be the it's the it's the plus two in all of the stat uh spreads mm -hmm. um you when it comes to moves you start with air shaping and what and one other move and the way air shaping works is you roll natural on a seven or greater you choose one of the following options immobilize a foe move as fast as the wind perform a great feat of acrobatics, or reposition the battlefield. On a 10, you choose one of the above, but also add one to your rolls until you stop moving. Um, and I'm perfectly... F I'm, it would... S one, would th one would think that I would... That, I, that because of how I like customization, I would prefer the technique system that's in Legends... The problem, the problem that I had with that technique system is that it is that one, it was a series of feats, and two, it ended up making the example characters, even though there's, even the ones who are supposed to be benders, really only doing one, tr one bending trick. Whereas this allows you to use theater of the mind to basically do whatever you want with that air shaping. And given how free, given how free form bending is supposed to be. This is a preferable setup. Yeah. I, I know that we have on more than one occasion stated that uh, just saying do whatever with your own flavor in, in the text itself is not always a good thing. We've never always said it's a bad thing either. Mm -hmm. It's all about context and how it's applied and whether it suits that context and application. In this respect, where air shaping is itself just a move, um, and it, it allows you to do one of the four things listed without further explanation and leaves details and th your theater of the mind up to you, mm -hmm. that, that works with this system. This system is about allowing you to express these these characters and stories in this world that is a very specific type of world, a very specific type of setting mm -hmm. in the way you want to express it while still thematically fitting that setting. So you already know what I'm uh, going to go back to Avatar here, what Aang can do as an, air, as an airbender. We've seen him spin up a little tiny sphere of swirling air and use it as what he calls an air scooter and that's moving as fast as the wind right there that's one of the like several different ways he's moved as fast as the wind on his glider you know swirling air around himself in the middle of battle all of those things we know what they look like we can fill those details in ourselves we just need a target for whatever effects we're feeling at that time 
here. Mm -hmm. So this freeform semi descriptionless almost uh, way of showing how to use your bending is perfect because no two people are going to want their airbender to airbend the same exact way. That's that would piss off everyone. Plus, um, in my in my opinion, when tr um, bending is bending is something that does that would not that is not going to work as well with a with a syst with a system of clearly def of clearly defined effects. Um, it ha it has to it has to be one of those ones that's op that's open to interpretation simply because try because trying to trying to list the trying to list the full potential of of those effects would end up would end up resulting in the same kind of spell bloat that I complain about. Mm -hmm. it, um, it would it would be so many different uh, things. Mm -hmm. uh, there there would likely be pages just for that in a single playbook. These playbooks right now. Are th are like about three pages each. They're they're small. They're tiny. Mm -hmm. Or well, relatively so. This this the, compared to what my, some people might think of as a playbook in their mind. Mm -hmm. These these are tiny dossiers used to help you flesh out what you've got in your brain. And if you were to detail every little thing air shaping could do that dossier then actually becomes an actual folder or an entire case file. If we're, I'm going to continue this analogy and that's, that's not, it's not fun. Mm -hmm. It's not fun. Yeah. Now next is the aristocrat whose chakras are commanding and inspiring, honorable and trustworthy, insufferable and privileged, manipulative and treacherous. Now, you see how some of these could be in conflict with each other if you mm -hmm. took them. Uh, for example, some people may want to take manipulative and treacherous, but then combining that chakra with honorable and trustworthy might seem like an oxymoron. Uh, you can be honorable and trustworthy and still manipulate people into treacherous situations. It's not, it's not mutually exclusive. To some people, it might be in their brain, but and that's entirely fine if, they, if that's how they want to design their character. But mm -hmm. you could still have both, and it could still work. There are ways to do it. Um, I do like that they put that they put that you have to do your back you have to do your backstory last. <laughs> um, gain the gain the respect of as many characters as you desire for each character. You cause to respect you, make an oath, though it needn't be to that character. Um, <laughs> I can see... And you get... Go ahead. And you get a, a really... Wow, two effects from your mastery move. Yep, you do have to choose one, though. Either A, when you have at least three oaths and take an additional oath, gain one chi. Or when you have exactly one oath, add one to any roll when making actions directly related to completing it almost think the first one would be more useful but then the second one's really good too so and that's a hard choice mm -hmm. that's a really hard choice Ooh, i like it yep that's another that's another good thing when there is no clearly uh superior choice mm -hmm. when, when whatever choice you make is always useful in some fashion that's fantastic yeah now, when it comes to the mo when it comes to the moves, unlike the air shaper, they p they just pick two moves instead of having one move preset and then one freebie. And all of their moves are all about um they don't have a whole lot of moves, but they're all about social play. Yeah. Actually, I think my my favorite is probably web of commitments. Nope, I I take it back. They have a they still have one page worth of worth of moves and I do. I can't help but note that a lot of a lot of them are are related to them manipulating the. Oh, re, actually, no. I take it back. The only one that's really manipulating the oath system is Web of Commitments. 
Yeah, which is which is why I like it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but this is your, but Aristocrat is very much your diplomancer character. Not just your diplomancer. They're your uh, face man. They, they 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 can be your face man. They can be your mastermind. Mm -hmm. I mean, they even have a move called mastermind. Yeah, that, that's the that's the most detailed one. So let me read that one off. When you scheme and plan a future plot, roll keen. On a 10 or greater, the MC will pick two of the following conditions, only one of which must be addressed to succeed. On a 7, 8, or 9, the same thing, but you'll need to address both. So either then, a, a, it'll be very expensive or resource intensive. B, it'll take hours slash days. C, you're going to need blank's help. Or D, blank stands in the way of success. Essentially, it, I, I would say they're both exact. Like each pair of things is, is is the same thing, just an opposite face of the same coin. Because mm -hmm. time is a resource. It's just a different type of resource. And then there's a chance that you either need need the help of an NPC or there's an NPC that stands in your way. Yep. I still think Web of Commitments is really cool, though. When you take an oath contradictory to another oath you've made, you may give up one of them without it counting as breaking an oath for the purposes of the move, though there will still likely be social consequences to not fulfilling it. Mm-hmm. Um, then we have Earth Shaper. Oh, right. hey, it's tough, except, you know, more likely Boomy. Or the, or the Boulder. The Boulder! <laughs> so, back the... Hang on, I forgot the chakras. Chakras are dedicated and stubborn, dependable and hardworking, unmoving and cautious, and vengeful but forgiving. They start with one maximum fortune, mm -hmm. whereas Air, Air Shaper and Aristocrat had zero maximum fortune. Because they, well, um, fortune fortune does seem to lean into your te your um ability to tank. So. Fortune favors the boulder. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> that one hurt. Ah, good, like a boulder to the toe. Uh, <laughs> I always miss this, and I always welcome it back. Anyway, backstory: you don't let pe you don't let people down. Usually, each character has respect for you, except for blank, um, which could be very interesting. And what have you promised them to try and gain their confidence? So these are linked. It looks like a linked backstory right there. Mm -hmm. Um, it's and its mastery move is wh whenever you pass up an opportunity for action, for action or resist opposition without reaction, gain one chi. So basically, whenever uh, you stand as a mountain, but no matter how much the wind howls, you will not bow. You gain a chi. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mulan, for teaching us some great life lessons. Yes, and when it um, Earth shaping does doesn't have the doesn't have the choice of doesn't have the choice of bullet points like air shaping does. Instead, you roll solid on a seven or more. You add an environment tag. On a ten or more, anyone taking advantage of that environment tag when making a move will add one to their roll. And then, of course, the same tag or the same uh, tagline at the end. Other actions can involve earth shaping, but are treated as whatever move would be appropriate. Mm -hmm. Again, the the free form, you can use your earth shaping as this move, mm -hmm. rather than using your earth shaping which ha as a specific effect. Yep. And of course, of course, if somebody wants to go full top, they can they can learn they can learn they can learn metal shaping, and or vibration, vibration sense. sense. <laughs> oh. Then we have the fire shaper. So, ev so everyone, so everyone's favorite scarred boy, or everyone's cra uh, everyone's favorite yandere psycho sister. I can't. I 
it still dis it still disappoints me that there that there are people who can who who unironically try and try and defend Azula as a victim in the story. It still squicks me that there are Azuko shippers. Those and that's definitely deserving of the head cannon. They've listened to Sweet Home Alabama way too much. Yeah. Um, plus, when it, whenever it whenever it comes to people trying to do the whole oh, is, oh is all, Azula's not that bad, I re, I remind you what Iroh had to say about her, <laughs> the, which admittedly was which admittedly was one of those moments that made me bust out laughing. The whole I I know she's my sister. And I should try. I should be trying to get along with her. No, she's crazy and she needs to go. Mm -hmm. But the fire, oh, I will. the fire shapers chakras are excitable and energetic, honorable and disciplined, restrained and peaceful, volatile and explosive. Once again, well, we, we know have what... once again we have two that w that you would think wouldn't um wouldn't mesh, but people will find a way. You mean restrained and peaceful along with volatile and explosive? Yes. Yeah. Um, we, well, we know which two Azula took, and we know which two uh, Zuko took. Azula took excitable and energetic and volatile and explosive. Zuko took honorable and disciplined and honorable and disciplined. <laughs> I must restore my honor. Yep. Um, uh, everybody make, remembers that first make, two books. Um, you make two O's, one making up for past failures, and one made to ease another's burdens. Why is this backstory just Zuko? <laughs> <laughs> it, it's well the um like we said, it's very <laughs> it's very clear that the, that the shape that a lot of the playbooks are XPs of established characters. But yeah, the reason why I don't mind it here is the is the fact that it's is the fact that um the that it's not out it's not outright te it's not outright pigeonholing you in the in this regard. That's true. I uh I just want to say though, this is not Doki Doki Avatar Club. This is not just Zuko. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um. The mastery, mo the mastery move. Um, you can never be tagged. Uh, you can never be tagged by being burned by natural, fi by natural fire or your own magical fire. <laughs> so, if somebody sets the forest on fire after you've seen a master fire shaper, just stand there. You'll be fine. Um, I just, re I just realized what I just realized what you could use to your advantage with this kind of thing. Do you remember immolation, the spell from the Souls series? Yes. <laughs> Do, do you do you remember the old meme wizard drops a fireball at his feet? Yes. Same thing. Same thing. Mm -hmm. That's what this is. Mm. Oh, I, I've, my mastery move is I get to just drop fireball at my feet and take zero. Yeah. <laughs> um, fire shaping does have that bullet point set up much like air shaping did, just with different bullet points. So either, But in this case, it's actually the opposite. You roll hot... On a ten or more, it does what you want. On a seven, eight, or nine, you lose control of it in some manner and have to choose have to choose one of the following: either a, the flames are larger and more taxing than intended; they burn hot and strong, but take minus one to the next roll you make. Two, the flames explode into being, injuring all nearby, including the fire shaper. Add tags as appropriate. So there's where the mastery comes into effect. Or c. You set fire to the area. Add a relevant environment tag. So the so the mastery literally makes two of these non threats to you. Mm -hmm. Um. And of course, as uh, lightning lightning bending came from fire bending, there's a move for lightning shaping. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, another move that is Zuko all over it, driven by honor. <laughs> I love it. Mm -hmm. I love it. Um. You know, something we didn't point out with, with air shapers that I want to point out with fire shapers, um, a move called sun soul with fire shaper. When the sun is in the sky, you get plus one to hot. 
there was there was one for for uh, air shapers where when you're outside of a building, plus one to natural. So taking that move seems like really good in certain ra- in certain ways, but there's all of again, all of these moves are useful. There's there's some sort of usefulness here with every move you could choose here. So. Sun Soul may not be something you need to consider, especially since of the improvements, you only get two, uh, two, two improvements to take a fire shape for move. Mm-hmm. So, um, when it comes to the next one, which is the Hunter, um, is... We can say we can safely say it's a better ranger than a ranger in certain other fantasy games. Hmm. Uh, the chakras are brash but wary, passionate and cocky, predatory and secretive, and wild but kind. A um, lot of things that can tie together here. I really love these chakras. They've been really good. Mm-hmm. Um, backstory is you regularly bring back trophies of your prey, grizzly or otherwise. <laughs> you know, some somebody somebody decides decides to go decides to go out hunt, decides to go out hunting, and they um, they de- they de- they deal with. Si- what would be what would be a good what would be a good exa- what would be a good example for this kind of thing? Mm. I'm not sure. I'm just think I'm just thinking of something treacher a treacherous kind of animal that they'd end up dealing with and bring back the and bring back the head. I mean, that could be one of any number of jungle cats or um I mean, if we're going with avatar specific stuff, what about those uh what about the badger moles? Those guys are actually really treacherous on their own just because they they continue to dig even if other things are there, yeah, I can, I can go I can go with that. Um, and then it says blank has shown respect for your talents. Yep. Which I I like to imagine as a case of okay you're good okay you're good at this hunting thing but could you could you stop bringing up could you stop bringing home heads? Now you've just got me thinking that hunter is a cat. Oh. Yes, my little schnookums, I love to death that you're such a good hunter. Please stop bringing back the chewed up heads of wood rats. <laughs> I am not speaking from personal experience at all. No, not at all. Not stepping on a half chewed wood rat head in 2.30 a.m. Yep. Um, blank has been kind to you when you were in need and you respect them for it. What promise have you made to them to show that respect? The... Let's see. The mastery move is whenever you tag a foe who is not aware of your presence, you may immediately add an environment tag describing the current situation. Seems interesting. Mm-hmm. And one of those environment... An easy environment tag would be traps. Yep. You know, or... or um, put, I... I guess a, a dickish move for me to for me to pull in this kind of thing is um is the is a is a environment tag that they see a sign that just says watch your step. <laughs> you know, and then then you put things like then you put things like the good old um fall, the, the good old false floor kind of thing. The false floor or the or the or the kind of traps that you that are basically running gags for any anime involving ninjas. Yeah. Um. Use what because this isn't a bend because this isn't a shaping class. You do get to, you do get two moves. Um. I find I find a couple of, a couple of the namings for moves interesting. Um, in particular, white stag. Because. The idea, the idea of the of the appearance of the white st- of the white stag as as the as the sign of a quest. That's a very European thing. Yeah. Um. Let's see. When, this is when you name 
When you name a quarry your white stag, swear an oath to capture or kill them. Your choice. You always intuitively know if your white stag is near, and while they are, you add one to commit open violence and move with intention rolls. You can only have one white stag at a time. Break your break your oath when you give up. So this is for that. This is for the people who are going with the whole. I'm gonna find and kill Bigfoot, or I'm gonna find and kill Jaws kind of thing. This is your Moby Dick moment, except mm -hmm. on land. On land, and you probably have both your legs. I hope so. I don't know. You don't need legs. You just need a really big bow, powered by gunpowder. I'm talking about a gun. This is a gun. <laughs> um, see, then we have the monk. Who oh, hey, it's you. Fuck off. <laughs> Let's see who whose chakras are calm and reserved, faithful and preachy, hard and jaded, and sensitive but disciplined. Hmm. <laughs> Depending on your kind of monk, that's fairly accurate. Um. So so, would would we say then, monk? <laughs> that your chakras are faithful and preachy and hard and jaded. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. Upside, you have one maximum fortune. Yes, I do. <laughs> um... Let's see, back, the backstory is the oath you made to blank takes priority over all others. Why? That's very on point. And mm -hmm. you restored you restored blank's faith in you recently, gained their respect. Once again, very much on point. <laughs> the mastery move is you is essentially a renewal of vows, and you set a condition. You will neither either A afford yourself any luxury, cause intentional harm, or tell anything but the truth. Treat this vow as a chakra. If you break the vow, the master knows and sends people for you. We know which one you picked. It's tell anything... Wait, tell anything but the truth. Why would you take that? So, so, uh, I misread it for a second. It's a, uh, but said tell nothing but the truth. Mm -hmm. um, uh, sorry, well, then no, you, 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 have, you have... Hang on, hang on, hang on. You will never tell anything but the truth. So you were, oh, stu you were still right. I, okay, my 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 uh, my my assessment is still correct, and we still know which one you picked, <laughs> because I already know that you would never ever vow to give up hurting people, <laughs> <laughs> and I already know you afford yourself at least a little bit of luxury. I'm I'm not able night road. All right. <laughs> Fair. Fair. I, sh I sure as hell I'm not going to I'm not going to tr not not going to put that much amount of sugar in a cup of tea. That would just be sacrilege. Yeah, because then then it's not tea, it's soup. It's not even it's not even it's not even soup. You're tur you're trying to turn tea into the mo into the world's shittiest icy. Indeed. Oh. Let's see that um, you have t you have two moves on the matter. I'd say, um, I'd say some people would say that that a, that a air no a air nomad would have equal parts air shaper and monk, but really, the monk playbook has more in common with the guru who during who you who we saw on the tail end of um, Earth. Mm -hmm. You know the the one who ta the one who was teaching Ang about his own chakras. Yep, the one who tried to. Uh... Tried to teach him stuff until you know Aang got lightning gone to a spike of crystal. Mm -hmm. Um, especially since especially since one of the moves that they have is Guru. Um, yeah. Now the pe the peasant is a self explanatory kind kind of playbook. It ain't much, but it's honest work. Ah, um, uh, that meme is still good. Mm -hmm. The chakras are cautious and superstitious, generous and faithful, quick to anger but forgiving, and ignorant but sly. And they have one maximum fortune. 
Well, yeah, they've been working and breaking their back for all their lives. Let's see. Their backstory is you owe blank big and have sworn to make it up to them. Decide whether you respect them or not. <laughs> um, what... I owe this. <laughs> this just reminds me of, of <laughs> you owe Biff big and have sworn to make it up to them. Decide whether McFly respects him or not. <laughs> no. Um, what you what what did you and Blank each swear that has brought you so close together and earned your mutual respect? If there are no other player characters so inclined, create an MC character instead. Mastery move. Mm -hmm. Since there are no masters for what you do, instead, when you were seen tra when you receive training from a master of another discipline, you may take the mastery move from the appropriate playbook. When you do, you may spend one chi to immediately transfer to that playbook, as if you had taken the advanced improvement to change into a new playbook. Interesting. So peasants can upgrade. This is a way to get a different um, stat spread track onto another book. In one in one way, mm -hmm. and to also get some really cool moves from the from the peasant book, because there are a couple here that are really good. Actually, this this kind of reminds me of. Do you remember? Do you remember the novice class from Ragnarok? Yeah, I can see it. That's kind of that's kind of what this is going with. I'd say another example would be the squire in um in Final Fantasy. Yeah, specifically in but tactics. Yeah, but I mean, some of some of the things that you could potentially bring over to that other playbook would be like fool's luck. Your maximum fortune is increased by one. You can only spend fortune if you're not intentionally attempting to defend yourself. Defend yourself. Or loyal servant. Mm -hmm. When you make an oath to someone above your station, add one to any roles directly related to completing it. When someone above your station fulfills an oath to you, if you do not respect them, gain one G. Mm -hmm. um, then we have the scholar, um, whose who, whose set whose chakras are absent-minded and unaware, detail-oriented and haughty, excited and reckless, and quiet and reserved. This reminds me of that of that inventor guy that was found at one of the Air Nomad temples. Yeah, I think I I can see I can see that as as where this kind of thing is going. Um, well, the art reminds me more of the Dai Li. Mm. <laughs> I think yeah, I, I, it's the hat, isn't it? Yeah, it's definitely the hat, the conical the conical hat. Mm -hmm. um, backstory is blank. Once save your life, earning your respect. In return, what did you promise them? And the mastery move is when you learn from. You learn from a mastery master inventor, so they are going with that approach. Choose a small object. You never need to spend materials to produce this tool. Or, or you can learn from a master sage. Yep. And then when observe caref when you observe carefully, you can choose to ask the following question. What does my research reveal about this? If the research is pertinent, there may be extra information. That's mm -hmm. nice. Um I do I do like that one of the um, one of the gear options that you can choose as a weapon is a thick book. As some as somebody who's been thwacked over the head one too many times with textbooks, I can relate. As someone who hit themselves in the head with his textbooks over and over again, I I, uh, I can also relate, but I'm also immune to book damage at this point. Mm-hmm. Unlike some of the other non shapers, these this one start this one starts with a with a with with one move predetermined. That being always prepared. When you begin the session, roll one die plus keen. The result is the number of materials you have for that session. Spend materials one for one to produce a small, simple tool of your choice. You may spend a second material to produce a small, complex tool instead. Lastly, you can spend one material at any point to ask a single question from the Observe Carefully list. Um, the Scholar, even though there was the Sage option, feels very, very much like it, like what you, like, um, you know what, fuck it, it's Kang the Mad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I like, uh, I like, I like, um, 
there are... Wow. This is, this is your, um... This is almost your skill monkey. I'd say I'd say it I'd say this is what would happen if the if if you um did the fusion dance with the skill monkey and an artificer. Well, I think this is a skill monkey based in resource management. Is what I'm thinking. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, I can I can see that. So it's crazy. Yeah, so it they're put they're. You're actually you're actually having a you're actually having a resource system in, a resource system in a in a playbook, which I'm pretty sure to some is blasphemous, but I don't care. It's fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's there's my answer. It's that's that's just so dumb. Why is resource management in the playbook? It fuck you. It's fun. Mm -hmm. Um, although wow. Although personally, if I'm if I'm picking this playbook, I'm pr the starting moves are always prepared in construct. <laughs> of course, of course. I think uh, mine would probably be always prepared and trained observer. Let's see. When you observe carefully, you may ask an additional question, regardless of result, even on a failure. Yep. Sorry, but uh, if I'm going to be the guy asking all the questions, I want to make sure, damn sure that at least one fucking question is getting answered. Mm -hmm. um, next playbook is the Spirit Shaper, whose chakras are arrogant and zealous, intimidating and secretive, pacifistic and understanding, principled and immovable. Now, before we move further, mm -hmm. I, I, I actually have to point out the flavor text for this uh, particular playbook. You were once afraid of the monsters in your people's legends. They were ethereal and strange, but you visited their world and come back stronger. You're not afraid anymore. No, those monsters are afraid of you now. I love that. <laughs> oh, I love that. That is so cool. Mm -hmm. They get three backstories, though. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. So first, you have the respect of a great spirit, and thus you know its true name. What is it? Rumpelstiltskin. <laughs> Your, I was, I um, I was gonna, I was gonna say Ged, but only <laughs> you would get it. <laughs> oh, that's bad, Monk. Why? <laughs> because the because because even years later the er, the um. The T the TV special version of Earthsea still pisses me off. That's why. Um, you respect you respect anyway. You respect blank and have shown them the spirit world. And what spirit have you summoned for blank? What went wrong? Is this supposed to be Unalak? I think this I... is supposed to be Unalak. Maybe. Or at least Unalak, I... if he wasn't it, if he wasn't just a carbon copy of his brother. Unalak, if he wasn't dumb. Yes, mm -hmm. this is actually better. Mm -hmm. Its mastery move is what um you may use any spirit's true name to summon to summon it at any time without a roll, though it may not be happy or forgiving of this. A true name must come from the spirit itself to be used this way. And a lot. There was there were, obviously spirit bent spirit bending was it was in um avatar was in both avatar and legend of korra but um in terms of in terms of the full extent of what it could do it's never been fully delved into it wasn't even called spirit bending in avatar it's mm -hmm. called energy bending yeah and in the and first we in one in one form we had it th we had the whole thing of t of taking away um taking away Ozai's bending although there's I've seen some people speculate that it didn't take away his ability to bend it just changed what his el it just changed what his element was supposed to be even in the associated side materials there's no evidence for that people mm -hmm. making that theory are making that theory based on what's the word Baseless conjecture. 
it's an interesting thing to think about, but that's as far as I was that's as far as I was willing to go. That's the only reason I brought it up. Um, yeah, it's and of course Amon basically cheapened the whole thing by being able to take away people's bending like it like it was going out of style. Which is why everybody thought he might be some sort of energy bender or an anti avatar type character, and then it's like, no, it's blood bending. But we've already been over these these uh, complaints mm -hmm. in our reconstruction of Korra Book One. Mm -hmm. So let's move on. Yes, but a lot of it is the t is the typical um, binding or sh or shaman kind of archetype. Yep. Um. Unlike other benders, you start with two moves of your choice. Mm -hmm. Like astral projection or binding contracts, communion with spirits. Mind warp. I like that one. Let's see, when you exert your will over a being's essence, roll fluid. On a ten or greater, it falls under your influence, perhaps with resentment. On a seven, eight, or nine, it contorts to your it can it contorts your command, fights you for control, or has some influence over you in return. If if used against another player character, treat the command as an oath. Um You wanna know what you wanna know what I'm reminded of when it comes to this kind of thing? What's that? Do you remember? Do you, you've seen Thunderbolt Fantasy? Yes. Mm-hmm. We've discussed it. Remember? Yeah. Remember one? Remember one of the one of the two cursed swords in um season two. I uh, gonna have to be more specific than just one of the two cursed swords. I believe. I believe it was. I believe it was called the. Actually, I, th I think it. W it was either the Mo the sword of mourning or the or the knight's lament. I think the it was the knight. I think it was the knight's lament. Basically, basically, if you get if you get poked with the thing, you become a puppet. Yeah. And given that the other one could put people under its spell by having by simply looking at them, solution. Have have somebody willingly be a puppet. And put and put the puppet master in the hands of the biggest asshole. Good guy in the group. Jeez, it's hard to call Gale a good guy. I mean, he is a hero. In the in a, <laughs> in a we, he is in a weekend at Bernie's kind of way. Still a hero. <laughs> He's still a dick. Hey, we've had plenty of dick heroes throughout the years who are fantastic. Mm -hmm. Of course, I'm pretty sure a Phoenix Killer wouldn't see it that way. There are a lot of things Phoenix Killer no longer sees. Yeah, because he's dead. That's the joke. You suck, <laughs> McBain! <laughs> oh, but next is the warrior. So who... Sokka, got it. Although, although oddly enough, the art has the art looks more the art looks more like a samurai ko. So the warriors of Kyoshi got it. Um, the chakras are honorable and fair, intense and unflinching, ruthless but respectful, and violent and frightening. Yep, Kyoshi. So that makes Sokka a peasant then. <laughs> um given given how given his jack of many trades thing probably <laughs> okay i like those chakras though those are pretty nice mm -hmm. um backstory is you've sworn to never harm blank even though you do not trust them and blank has earned your wrath name this mc character and swear to bring about their downfall yep kiyoshi yeah. Let's see. It, their mastery is when you enter battle, you may immediately challenge one foe to single combat. If they deny you, gain one chi. Um. There is there is there is one th there is one phrase that is burned into my head. Um. See. Um. Seeing that mastery move. And it's unfortunate. I'd like it to be something from Ava from Avatar, but it isn't. But it is one that you will recognize and yell at me about. <sighs> My name is Gyobu Masakaku Onewa. 
I I won't yell at you. <laughs> because that's a really good fucking game. <laughs> but, I love Sekiro. I do, I do too, but that was, that was the first thing that came to mind with this whole challenge one person to single combat. My, uh... Because I've been reading a crack... What is essentially a crack fic of a wuxia novel recently called Keyboard Warrior. Uh, the, the first thing that comes to my mind is a skill he has called What You Looking At. If he says what you're looking at to somebody, they are compelled to look at him and say, I'm looking at you, shithead. Mm -hmm. This interrupts any type of move that requires their voice. It even causes them to stop moving in some cases. It has been like his most broken skill in the last two, like 20 or 30 chapters. So, uh, um,. That's that's my that's my thought in my mind. What you looking at? <laughs> mm-hmm. And of course, of course, the, of course, the other the other the other gag I could go with it is making jokes about bachelors, but um, only you would get that. Lord I am the could- sand guardian. Um. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, they they do start with two moves. Um, I was kidding about the about the samurai art, but one of the moves is samurai, and then the other one they get is wire foo. What is this now? We turned into into old spaghetti westerns. Um, well, the well one of the other ones is outlaw, so maybe you're not too far off. <sighs> I love a receipt. <laughs> Crouching tiger hidden badass. That's what this is now. Well, um, I am tr- mixing. Um, I am. Tr- I am. Um, of course, of course, if we're gonna go that far, then then improviser is basically every Jackie Chan fight scene. Since it says everything in your surroundings is a weapon in your hands. Memories of battle is every shonen may ever. Mm-hmm. When you just got hurt, you remember memories from your past, either as a flashback or just a recollection. Yeah, that's about accurate. That's that, that's that's every fucking this the warrior is an anime character. Let's just boil it down to that. This is the most anime character in the playbooks thus far. We have always argued play to we've always argued play to the stereotypes because they're fun. This is playing to the stereotypes because it's fun, but it's also this is this is this such an anime character that you're going to get all the references and it's probably going to make you cringe just a little bit. I I don't know I don't know the idea the idea of a the idea of a of a samurai in full, in full in full armor Wield, wielding, 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 say a um. Fuck it, let's Don't go with a Zan, with a zanbato and having having wire foo as one of their moves makes me laugh hard. Okay, good. You didn't go with the low hanging fruit. No, I was going to say a samurai dual wielding folding ladders. No, <laughs> while holding a baby and he doesn't run any trouble. <laughs> In a knickknack factory. <laughs> <laughs> How many layers of irony are we on? Yes. Good answer. Uh, <laughs> next one is, of course, the water shaper. Um, the ch- the chakras are calm and kind, enthusiastic and impatient, mothering and paternal, vindictive and tempestuous. Parental, not paternal. Yep. Parent- because that would mean mother and father. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think we're in Greek legend right now. I don't think this is the offspring of Hermes and Aphrodite. <laughs> no, and it's certainly not one of the offsprings of Zeus. We don't talk about those. <laughs> Let's see. It go um, backstory dedicate um 
this, despite your past failures, you have dedicated your oath to blank, and blank is beloved by my people, and so is respected by me too. Oh wow! Trend chaser much? Mm -hmm. Um, mas the master move is once you've trained with a once you've trained with a master water shaper, you are more efficient about your water use and may carry one additional water. Which is going to come into play on the water shaping move. Mm -hmm. You have a small supply of water. You can carry up to three water, which is replenished whenever you come across a sufficient body of water. When you manipulate water in combat, spend one water and roll fluid. On a, ro on a ten or more, choose two from the list. On a seven, eight, or nine, just one. You can pick a single option multiple times. Either impose a tag on a foe, impose an environment tag, or get the spent water back. This is like those times where Katara whips water out of her water skin and then right back in again. Mm -hmm. Of course, you can get the the normal stuff such as a healer, ice shaping. I feel attacked. And I mean, it even changes the roll stat to Keen, which mm -hmm. would definitely suit you. Yeah. Um, then we get into the sub playbooks, which isn't, which is another cool option that this thing has. These sub playbooks, for all intents and purposes, they're prestige classes. Yep, we've got some stuff that's less explanatory. And some stuff that's much more explanatory. Like I mentioned earlier, we have very recognizable things such as the lightning shaper and the metal shaper. Mm -hmm. But we've also got things like the shaping master. I don't know. Is the shaping master going to be the avatar or is the world shaper going to be the avatar? I th I think sh I think shaping ma I think shaping master might, but we'll find we'll be finding out soon. Indeed. Um. So, so, so again, they do go into the the setup of these and the fact that there is a entry condition, i.e., the moves that you have that the um, setup that you have to have. Basically, all the prerequisites. And and each one has three moves associated with it. Yep. So the first one is the artist, which feels very bardy. So this is what you would put on top of your aristocrat, maybe. Mm -hmm. In order to get it, you have to be a practitioner of some renown in an art, whether it be visual, auditory, or performance-based. So it doesn't necessarily have to be the um, be that one. You could do this with any of the of the base classes that um in mm -hmm. in general. Um, heck, it might even be easier with the shapers. Yeah. Plus, plus it provides and plus it provides a night. There's been plenty. There's plenty of stories all over all over the place of of tr of people using tra using traveling performer as a cover for their real work. Yeah. <clears throat> um. Well, the um, if you remember the short the short lived superhero um series, the Cape, the ba the base of operations doubled as a doubled as a circus. Yep. Um, let's see, Blood Shaper is well. It's what we th it's what we think it is. <laughs> yep. Entry has to be water or spirit shaping, mm -hmm. and you have to take Blood Shaping before you can take Crimson Moon or Blood Curdling, which are the other two skills. Mm -hmm. As for how Blood Shaping works, when you manipulate an MC character's blood to control their body, you roll hot. On a 10 or greater, your hold is firm and lasts until you release concentration. On a 7, 8, or 9, your hold lasts for but moments, enough time for an action or two at most. You only get to command their body, never their mind. Blood shaping takes total mental and physical concentration. I'm guessing that last part, part is to basically say you're, you're completely vulnerable while doing it. Which would, which would make sense, but you know it would be a terrifying combination... A spirit shaper who takes blood. A spirit shaper who has, who has mind warp and takes blood shaping as well. <laughs> I'm gonna mind warp you and blood shape you. Let's do this. 
Now, obviously, they couldn't do, they can't do both at the same time, but they can alternate. Which, Not to uh, mention mind mind warping. Imagine if they get ten or more on both. Yeah. Um, that's a obviously obviously there's there's no way to there's no way to not do um elements of horror when it comes to blood bending there's no there's no way to get around it it's a it's a classic body horror kind of thing of fear fear of losing bodily control oh wow oh wow okay so blood curdling is essentially speaking about the fact that blood shapers are feared mm-hmm and uh so anytime you speak honorably or act dishonorably, if they know you're a blood shaper, roll fluid instead of the usual stat. And if you are at that time blood shaping them, any result less than a seven is treated as a seven. So you automatically get success with this. Mm-hmm. Wow. And then Crimson Mood is a... Uh, uh, what? You can spend one chi to use blood shaping against any MC character under the light of the moon, so long as you know where they are. While you do so, you can see through their eyes. That's... What? <laughs> That's kind of fucked. Like I, like I said, bloodbending is body horror. Yeah, in specific ways, it definitely is. Mm-hmm. Um, Although I don't know why a metal bender can't just rip all the iron out of your blood. <laughs> I love the silence there, monk. <laughs> I'd rather not think about that. I mean, Magneto already did it to a guard in X2, but we don't talk about X2. I wasn't going to talk I was going to bring that up. I was going to bring about him taking all the adamantium out of Wolverine's body. Yeah, that was a lot worse. <sighs> oh. See, next is the is the doctor. Um, entry condition is you must all you must have the always prepared move. You must take physician before you can take field medic or scavenge. This almost seems like it would build up off of the scholar. Pretty pretty much, because always prepared is in the scholar playbook. Mm-hmm. And you and you're using materials in order to basically be basically be the medic of the party. Yep. So once again, you've gone from skill monkey to healer. Mm-hmm. Now you're skill healer. Yep. Next is the lava shaper, and you need to either have earth shaping or fire shaping, and you have to take lava shaping before you can take equilibrium or weight of expectations. And la- lava shaping is when you convert the environment into you into lava to cut off mobility. Roll hot. On a seven or greater, add an appropriate environment tag indicating the area's impassibility. On a ten or greater, you may also tag any trap characters in an appropriate inappropriate fashion. I do like that it's that you're still that lava shaping was something that was always gonna sh- always gonna show up, but unlike when it was done in Korra, it's not just creating creating a a um, glorified shuriken. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's nice and all, but I feel like that's a wasted opportunity. Yeah. I like equilibrium. Mm-hmm. Um, it allows you to control your body temperature. Yep. Down to very low metabolic levels, you can use this to ignore ambient temperatures, avoid detection, melt through substances, or even become a human weapon. But it does not, pro- it does not protect against actual controlled shaping. So if you put this on top of Firebender, and you've already met your master... It's going to help protect against a lot of things, though. Um, the the terrifying thing I could I could see is some, is somebody deciding that they're going to storm the castle, which is locked and has and has a bu- and has a bunch of a bunch of a bunch of guards. And he, instead of breaking instead of breaking down the castle gates, he just walks right through them. Or he pulls a dread pirate Roberts. <laughs> We have come to take your souls. Oh, Andre the Giant, how I miss you. Uh, let's see. And weight of expectations: when an oath drives you to actions that would not have uh, you would not have otherwise taken, you may take the mounting pressure tag in your lowest unfulfilled category to add plus two to one roll. 
Okay. Uh, then we have Lightning Shaper, of course. So we already have light. You have to you have to have taken Lightning Shaping or Metal Shaping. Inter interesting choice. This means that a Lightning Shaper can can come up from uh from Earth Shaping. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Kind of uh, makes sense why they why they'd be Metal Shaping. That's also why uh why I also have Lightning. Because we have both rock and roll. Damn it. Ah! Anyway, before you before you bring in Forte and Gospel into this, um, the fr the fr the first move they have is charge. When you spend time generating and storing energy, roll fluid on a ten or greater. You have two charge. On a 7 through 9, you have one charge. You can spend it to either add one to any roll, push, pull something or push something away, or experience a burst of energy and strength. If accompanied by an unintended discharge of electricity that causes undesired consequences, gain back, gain back the charge spent. So in, in other words, if you, if you have some accidental chain lightning effects... Uh, you keep getting the charge back, but you also probably die real, real, real quick. <laughs> uh, either, either that, you either die or you end up making a mess of the place, or you get superpowers. Wait a minute, you already have superpowers. Let's see. Um. Next is the Masterless Wanderer. You were once. Um, you were once in the service of a lord in an official capacity, but they died dishonorably. Alternatively, they purged you f from their ranks for a perceived failure. You could build this off of the samurai move from Warrior. Mm -hmm. um, if I want to make a... Z the only Zuko joke I can make about this is that this is the blue spirit. Yeah. Although they have some interesting little tricks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do. They do. They do. Especially, un especially unreliable. When you break an oath to someone, you can make them a new promise. If they accept, they gain one chi, and you do not roll for breaking the oath. If it was to an MC character, the MC gets the chi. Oh, um, see, then we have metal. Sh the we have metal shaping, or the metal shaper. Um, what? Which you either have to have. Metal bending or mind warp? What? Okay. I am confused, but this allows spirit benders to be, uh, I mean, spirit shapers to be metal shapers as well. Mm -hmm. So, all good. I think it has to do with one of the moves. Be uh, I think it has to do with some with the way some of the moves are set up, like say, um, shine and glitter. Mm -hmm. um, when you adorn yourself with medals and jewels, you roll solid when speaking honorably or acting dishonorably. Mm -hmm. And let's see. Then we have plant shaper. It's the foggy swamp benders. Swamp. It's not swamp. I don't know why I said swamp. Um, Gotta have water or spirit shaping. Mm -hmm. You must take plant shaping before. Before you can take liver, river of leaves, or swamp monster. Yep, Fa yep, it's Buddha Bubba. Yep. Are you gonna tell me that time is an illusion? So you saw all this coming, and you just and you decide to attack them because you're a dick. <laughs> I like it. I like Atla, but that whole time is an illusion thing it, um, never really stuck. I get the I get the intention and the, and the guy was the guy is supposed to be a, uh, supposed to be a Buddhist I think mm -hmm. or or at least a nod to Buddha but that but the whole t but time is an illusion was not the best way to word that yeah um I I I uh. I just like the fact that you you can you know shape the plants to grow plants like mm -hmm. the plant shapers, and then of course the swamp monster. We all remember the swamp monster thing from the from the show. Yeah. 
in the in the swamp in the swamp that has absolutely nothing mysterious about it at all. No, sir. <laughs> Although to its credit, I do like the fact that that was that is never explained exactly what caused the tornado that that threw them into the swamp. That is very true. It's a Deus Ex Machina that we actually enjoy. Well, given given the given the fact that they that throughout the swamp they kept seeing they kept seeing ghosts, um, and and get and getting tormented by their by their own by their own individual issues, you know the cliche. It's completely believable that the swamp that that the swamp just has weird shit going on. Yep, it's a Bermuda Triangle type place. Mm -hmm. Um, then we have sand shaper, self-explanatory. You have you must have either air shaping or earth shaping, and you must take sand shaping before you can take dust in the wind or earth flow. Um, let's see, sand shaping when you craft something from sand, roll fluid. On a ten or greater, choose two from the following list. On a seven, eight, or nine, only choose one. Either it is just as effective as the general as the genuine article. It'll last for a while, or unless inspected thoroughly, one cannot tell it is made of sand. I'm going to use sand shaping to make a diamond. <laughs> Sell it to somebody. Um, I'd probably, I probably do, I'd, um, I'd probably do it, but go one step further. A di a diamond, and inside it is a bomb. Like a smoke bomb or something. That would be funny, yeah. You know, some somebody, go, especially if they end up presenting it to say a noble, saying, "I present, I present to you this large diamond," and then it explode, then then it explodes into smoke. Boom. There's a there's way there are way too many there are way too many D, DM and player ideas I get from stealing stealing ideas from Looney Tunes, and Tom yep. and Jerry. Yep. Um see then we have the shape the shaping master which I take it back it is this is not the equivalent to the avatar um it's basically it's basically just a just representative of being a master of a, of of something mm -hmm. the, well of any shaping move yeah. you have to have at least one shaping move mm -hmm. so this is this is you essentially become the NPCs you were seeking the entire time or um, and any high-ranking member of the White Lotus. Mm, indeed. Mm -hmm. And let's see the spy. Um, for that you need to have you have unraveled some authority's power through subterfuge. Tell the NPC, tell the MC, two secrets the spy keeps from everyone. You can and should tell the other players, but their characters do not know. This is. There's an important difference between between player knowledge and character knowledge. A lot of people get those two mixed up. Remember, everybody, metagaming is not good. Oh. And then we have the... Okay, the world the world shaper, I'd say, is the, av I'd say is the avatar in this case. Just from the art, but yes, because the entry condition is you must have been called upon to rebalance the world. Um, when I, I do, I do like that one th one particular thing that they have that might rub people some some people the wrong way is that they get a sixth stat, known as spirit. Um, this starts at zero. When you restore peace, you increase it by one. When you commit serious bodily harm, decrease your spirit by one. At any point, you may manifest the world spirit. When while doing so, you're capable of shaping any element and use your spirit stat for all roles. When you release the world spirit at the end of the scene, whichever comes first, reduce your spirit to zero and take the fatigued tag. You know, I w in normal circumstances, I would I would raise an. Actually, you know what? I take it back. I do. I like that. I like that. This is kept ambiguous enough so we don't have to deal with the whole Rava situation. Yeah. Because I, I, I made uh, it clear I hate. I made it clear I fucking hated that thing. Well, especially after Atla having been uh, <clears throat> so influenced by things such as Hinduism and Buddhism and, and other such 
far eastern uh, mysticism, mm-hmm. where sight where cycles are the are the the focus, and there is no ultimate good or evil, but there are goods and evils. Mm-hmm. The whole Rava situation, having both a light spirit and a dark spirit, immediately goes to more towards Western monotheism, where there is one ultimate good and one ultimate evil. Which ruins the cyclic nature of many Eastern religions and mystic. Uh, mystic. Would uh, you say? Would you say? Now, I'd legends. I'd like to play a little bit of buy or sell. Is the is the whole light and light and dark spirit um, concept? Would you buy or sell between that and the introduction to the of the Paul wraiths in DS Nine? Ooh. As far as as far as which one was worse. Oh, I mean that's uh, that's really you know that's that's a really hard one there, uh, Monk. Because <sighs> personally, I personally I'd go with the Paw Wraiths I... as, being the, as being the worst between the two. So you're saying the Paw Wraiths are the cell, then? Technically. Yeah. Since, since you would want to keep the, the light-dark spirit thing. I... The big, the big reason for it is time. Like, a, a lot of... A, it, it, has more to do, it has more to do with the amount of overall, overall size rel- relative, to where, relative to where they are, because... Once the whole, once that whole thing with Rava is brought up, it's only ever brought up again once. Yeah, I. So I think I would probably go the same. I'd keep the light and dark spirits and Korra and sell the Paw Wraiths, if only because the Paw Wraiths are abruptly in and then just as abruptly gone, and it's never really explained at all. That it feels that like and, that feels and, like an asshole. Well, that and. That and um, I'll be I'll be honest. As much as I love Gold Ducat as a villain, he overstayed his welcome. Yeah, I, I just yeah, mm-hmm. it's still a hard choice for me because both are really shit. Yeah, you're like you're like it's like you're asking me to choose between diarrhea and a solid shit, and I prefer a solid shit, but they're still both bad. Mm-hmm. Um, um, there were there were three there were three other um other su- other sub playbooks that that were added in as um st- as stretch goals. We should um, take a quick look at those then. Yeah, the f- the first one is on page two hundred five, and that is the wielder. All right, um, give me a chance to get there real quick. Yep. All right. It says when when you the. And I, th- I do, and in this case, I do want to read the um, flavor text for it. The world is old, and throughout history, there are beacons of greatness and shards of wickedness. The deeds of humanity can shape the elements, but in some rare cases, they can make permanent their intentions. Born of very old and indomitable will, are relics of ancient times, immune to shaping, and set on a course that will see its end. When you, the entry condition is when you agree to take the burden of a relic. First, define that object's path. Then, seal your service to this relic with an oath. The paths are compassion and forgiveness, diplomacy and peacekeeping, history and truth speaking, and bloodshed and fear. And because of that, you get three very interesting moves: mm-hmm. walking uh, up the path, hallowed object, and bound and bonded. Um. The vibe, the, I'd say, I'd say if there, I can't think of any character in Atlas specifically that would remind Atla or 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 Korra that would remind me specifically of the wielder. The main thing that comes to mind is the is the archetype of the of of someone bound to the sentient weapon, like say um, say Elric. Yeah, but this, I mean, the the art very much looks like Samurai Jack as well. So it so and his and his and his sword was a relic weapon. Remember, mm-hmm. a foolish samurai warrior wielding a magic sword. Um, 
A sword, I mean, for, a sword forged from his father's own soul. Yeah, uh, and I almost think that this is a Samurai Jack inspiration, especially considering you know Mako is in both shows. It could be. I'd I'd say it's I'd say it's basically going on, going on the motif of of some of someone who, someone whose fate is bound to some item of power. Yes. That is exactly what it is. Um, whether whether that whether that be the sword of the human spirit in Samurai Jack, the Soul Reaver in the Legacy of Kane series, or or um or some or even something something in between. It doesn't it's it doesn't even have to be sentient. Yeah. Narsil. Mm -hmm. um, if we're gonna go Tolkien, Narsil works. Yeah. Um. The next one we have is the Merchant and. The art makes it very clear what this is supposed to be referencing. <laughs> yep. Uh, I'm going to read the, the flavor text. Money is power. Knowledge is power. Money, therefore, both gives you knowledge and power when you've got it and takes both to make it. Well, either you've got a bit already or you're going to soon. It's time to get to work. After all, time is money. My cabbages! <laughs> there you go. In order to in order to enter, you must you must acquire a business or begin play with one in order to in order to take to take entrepreneur. You must take entrepreneur before you can take rich in kindness or standards and practices. Um, see, then there's the ro the romantic, um, which is exactly which is exactly what it sounds like and the romantic leads right into the shipping moves which we are not going to cover we're simply so, saying and there's a reason why we we are choosing not to yeah the, these moves are moves used for romantic interaction um which is a good option for anyone who wants to use it mm -hmm. most people who are fans of avatar are likely not going to use it. That's just the nature of, of the beast. And the romances in the original Atla are appropriate for the ages of the characters. These are these are young people, barely teenagers in some cases, or not yet even teenagers, that are growing and learning about themselves, about their world, about who they are and how they fit within it. And so a lot of the romance is very puppy love, very fleeting, uh, and very, for lack of a better word, innocent. The, the closest we get to some of the heavier romances are things like uh, Zuko and Mai. Mm -hmm. um, or the joke you made earlier about Toph and Sokka. <clears throat> that, uh, but the, uh, these, these moves are still there as an option. And as we always say, more options are good. Now, whether the options themselves are actually good is an entirely different story. But having more freedom, having more player choice and interactivity within the game is good in the long run. Yeah. There is one there is one minor thing that was put that basically GM advice that was put in the stretch goal section that I do want I do want to talk about because it it brings it brings up some interesting um interest interesting discussion. Which section is that? Um, which uh which one? It's called Wusha Wusha cartoons age and gender. Um, that's page 197. All right, I'll go back up. And I, j I just want I just want to I just want to I just want to um read to to um re to read to read some to read some of this. Um, it says getting older, depending on where you are in your heroic journey, this is a glass half full, glass half empty situation. Maybe it was the first time you didn't bounce back from a gaming all-nighter or the first time you felt a creaking twinge in your bones when the weather changed. Regardless of where you are on that timeline, it's inevitability for us all. As I have gotten older and slightly creakier, I started to notice an underrepresentation of older people in Western media. This packs more of an emotional wallop when you're looking for yourself in media and come up empty. It's more of a gut punch when you try and find positive portrayals of older women and see less of a sampling. 
Consider the one-dimensional ways that you encounter the elderly in media. Dependent on others or as a burden to loved ones, mentally challenged or overly crabby, or reliving a second childhood. These can be facets of characterization, but as defining characteristics, it's lazy storytelling, and we can do better than framing them with negative stereotypes that lack, nu that lack nuanced representation. Um, what, I f what I find... What I find interesting about this is while 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 the while throwing a, while throwing around the t while throwing around the term, um, ar around the term representation and overrepresentation makes me makes me cr makes me cringe slightly from habit. Um. The. The I the idea the idea of not of not having old of having older characters in a po in a positive manner is some is something that I definitely think is is worth exploring and I do th I do th I do think that isn't as much of a problem as it was when we were kids. Well, and that's again because of the meshing of East and East and West. Mm -hmm. um, that this that this uh, section specifically has Wuxia in the uh, in the title. Is is telling uh, the the West and and I and I I'm gonna sound a little little preachy preachy and proselytizing here, but you know this is a monastery, so I guess that's Part uh of course exactly the West for all of the magnificent things civilization has given us, we have lost a few of the older. Some would say trappings, I would say accoutrements mm -hmm. uh, that we used to carry with us. Two foremost in my mind are the tr how we treat the elderly and how we treat warriors. The West treats both as something to be ignored in, in many cases. On individual levels, yes, there are plenty of families that venerate both the warriors in their, in their families and the warriors outspread and they venerate their elderly they they treat their grandparents and their old elderly with respect love them and help take care of them and keep them involved which there are a lot of su studies medically that show if you continue to keep the elderly involved in day-to-day -day goings on it keeps their mentality strong and will also help to keep their body strong through the mind-body connection that we have seen in much of medicine mm -hmm. The reason that the mesh of East and West has started to revitalize this positive portrayal and positive feeling in general uh, society for the elderly, at the very least, is that never went away in the East. The, the, especially if we look at Far East Asia, the, the countries most associated with all of the uh, fantasy elements that we talk about in Avatar, uh, Japan, Korea, China, uh, that entire area, they are very, very big on what is known as familial piety. You are respectful to your elders. You treat them with the veneration they are given because of the experience that they have and the hard work hard work they put down to forge a path forward for you now modern china notwithstanding <clears throat> uh this is most evident uh e even today in japan mm -hmm. um and it actually worries a lot of the elderly because they're like we're all getting old, but we don't see any young people. What the hell is going on? <laughs> yeah, but that's a um, that's a, that's a whole other can of worms that I don't feel like going into right now. Yeah, that's an entirely different social issue there. But because those cultures are now intermingling with the West, the West is finding a resurgence of this positive portrayal and attention to the elderly, at the very least. Mm -hmm. Uh as for our warriors, that's again another issue we don't just don't have time for. But in this respect, while there are some very edge case sentence buzzwordiness there, 
uh, the spirit is appreciated. Yes, we should portray both positive and negative elderly people mm -hmm. because that's going to be everywhere in life. But they're going to be good elderly people, bad elderly people. And in Wuxia novels, well, elderly people are just as likely to kick your ass as a young person. So that's, uh, that's, that's true to that particular fictional genre. What immediately comes to mind is the... Um is the for me on on one level is the landlady from Kung Fu Hustle. <laughs> yeah, that's that's one. But I'll uh, I'll go one further for you there, Monk. Mm -hmm. Everyone, I present to you Master Roshi. Maybe you've heard of him. Oh yes, the <laughs> the, the man who who is a to who is a who may be a total perv. But when, but when the, ch but um, was strong was strong enough to blow up Fire Mountain, which is always on fire. It goes beyond that too. Mm -hmm. uh, let let us not forget that as lascivious as Master Roshi is, and well, we all know how lascivious Master Roshi is. This is the same man who stopped his heart using a Kamehameha wave during the tournament of power and giving his own eulogy to tell his two disciples to live well and at the same time uh, panic the ever-living hell out of Goku who restarted his heart. Yeah. And, then, and then immediately Roshi goes, Roshi and goes, but I was surrounded by beauties! Why did you do that? The man, as lascivious as he is, has a heart of gold. And so he's got both the positive and negative connotations to it. And to bring this back to Atla, one of the one of the most po one of the most popular characters thro throughout that throughout that run was Iroh. Yes. Absolutely. Iroh is a gem. And he has, and he's portrayed both in a good way and a bad way. Mm -hmm. He's portrayed in good ways as calm and concerned, and he wants to be a good mentor, but nobody is allowing him to be, because he was just as exiled as Zuko, at least effectively. But there's also the negative effects. He can be lazy. He can uh, take too much. He gets too hedonistic at times. Just too much indulgence in anything. It's a hot spring bath or tea. Mm -hmm. He's got... But the, the, the big thing is, this section talks about not using just a one-dimensional stereotype as the be-all, end-all definition. Mm -hmm. Atla and Spades. Yes, there are a bunch of different facets to Iroh. Uh, some of which are elderly person stereotypes you see in other media. But they mesh well into a nice character. In this regard, I'd, I'd like to ask you. I'd like to ask. I'd like to posit something. Okay. Would you Would you say that Would you say that a that kind of the, I guess I'd say the prototype for bringing this kind of thing in was Uncle from Jackie Chan Adventures. would think so in certain ways uncle's a little more of a pastiche of stereotypes than he is well-rounded in many ways i wouldn't not in the terms of being well-rounded but in the ter in the terms of the uh, of the portrayal of an elderly character yeah yeah uh definitely a uh definitely like a, a proto or er uh, example of that character uh, character archetype i yeah. guess is the best way to put it and yeah it it is it is playing on, it is playing on the archetype of the of the elderly disciplinarian but um at, but he, but even even with that it's not it's not like he it's not like he's he's at, he's arguably one of, he's arguably one of the most useful people in that whole crew which is saying something, considering Jackie Chan is in a very useful person all on his own. Mm -hmm. Um, but 
but I look I look at that and I s and I s and then I look at the ca and I look at characters that showed up after the fact. That's the reason why I posited that particular question. And something else that I'm reminded of with this kind of thing is, um, when we did the Secret Guardians episode of mm -hmm. Geek Watch, um. You would, when we were constructing a hypothetical main character, you specifically wanted to aim for something a little bit older than the typical age. You wanted, and um, in a similar vein, I remember, I remember when I was when I was discussing with JT after for, after binging through the first two seasons and the first two, well, let, well, I'll say one, I'll say one and a half movies of um, Thunderbolt Fantasy. Uh -huh. I say one and a half because the fir because. I do because I do not consider the first movie to really be a movie. Yeah. Um, I he had he had remarked that he that he pref that he has that he prefers characters with experience, and you're certain some of the some it could be argued that some of that is du is due to age, but I do th I do think that th that there's. There's a bit of a mindset that's start that's starting to go by the wayside with a lot of people that, in order to have a blank slate kind of ca kind of character, or a or a audience surrogate kind of character, you need to have them be young, and you don't necessarily have to. Well, I would even argue that to have an audience surrogate, you don't need them to be a blank slate either. Mm -hmm. There have been. That's why I said blank slate or audience surrogate. Yeah. I know that a lot of people think that in order for an audience surrogate to be applicable, they have to have as little of themselves as possible so what our audience member is viewing can put themselves in that situation. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that's necessary. Uh, there's There are plenty of characters across media where the audience can still sympathize and put themselves in that situation even if the character is, well, full of character. It's it's always been a misconception in my mind that, that you would need so much removed from a character, age or, or personality or whatever, in order to sympathize with the situation. It's, it's uh, I'm glad to see that there are people trending towards, hey... Older characters are good. I specifically remember the reason why I wanted an older protagonist for our Secret Guardians episode being uh, more that I thought it would it would make for a more interesting dichotomy between uh, the the person he has to work with. The I believe the the was it the the librarian? Yeah, the librarian. Mm -hmm. or bookstore owner. Um, I also, at the same time, was thinking of uh, of one of my favorite characters from X. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. The, the Windmaster. Yeah, the, the, be the better of the two Windmasters. Yes. The actual Windmaster. The one who didn't get his ass kicked. The one who didn't get a hand through his chest, yes. Um, <sighs> Aoki Shinomori. Yep, if it was. But yeah. Give but um, given given that, now, I I was al I was already familiar with Legend of Legend of the Elements. Um, I think this was a bit of a blind run for for you. But having having mm -hmm. looked at having looked at both, um, what what's been what's been some of the big takeaways that you've had in comparison to the experience with. Um, Avatar Legends is quick start. So this has a very clear definition of the sandbox it wants to play in. It is not run the stories from Avatar. It is there is this nice rich world with all of this cool lore and stuff behind it and here are the toys to go play in that world. Um it also has a more definite idea in mind for its playbooks. They are not generic. You could not transplant these playbooks easily to anything else. You could still do it. 
it would be hard as hell, but you could do it. Um, there's more variety. I mean, yes, it was just a, a, a quick start, but still, there's more variety to just the base playbooks. And the the way it has set up the chakra and chi system and the oaths and respect system gives a lot more narrative to the game and thus more mechanical inspiration as well. Uh, all in all, what I took away in the comparison between the two is that the Avatar Legends uh, playtest, the quick start, is either the, the either the, the finished product has to be markedly different, which is not necessarily the case, and we're just missing too much, and so the quick start is a bad first impression, and as we both know, you only get one chance to make a first impression. Or it's just uh, it's just lazy. Avatar Legends feels lazy. It does not feel like a product they've spent to put time and and love into, but is rather, oh hey, we got this recognizable name, and let's capitalize on it because, oh yeah, we're really fans, guys. Trust us. Whereas Legend of the Elements. For a one-man band, for this whole thing being one guy, uh, it is very clearly a passion project, very clearly a project of love. And it shows in, in everything he's tried to forge uh, forge with it. Every, every move, every uh, playbook, everything feels like he put as much thought as he could into what that should be and how it should work. Uh, considering that Powered by the Apocalypse seems to be very freeform in uh, in this particular respect, I know that there are much more specific other uh, other PBTA hacks that you've mentioned before. Mm -hmm. um, but PBTA in general seems to be very not as not as universal as say GURPS, but it's something that gives a lot of free form to work with. And I think that what uh, what Max did here with that free form, with that canvas he was given, was to give us a fantastic sandbox to play in. I'm, I'm really digging this. I really am. Now, I will, I will, fu I will fully admit, um, it could be it could be argued that some that some of the that some of the playbooks in Legend of the Elements, um, on the surface, are very clear XPs of um, of of char of characters from Atla, but they're only they're only XPs in very superficial manners, except for maybe the Fire Shaper. <laughs> um, I'd say I'd say that I'd I'd say that I'd say that's cer that's certainly the exception. But even with that, there's enough wiggle room to the point where somebody could make a fire shaper and not have it be an XP of Zuko. Yeah, there's plenty of stuff you can work with to do to do so. Especially especially since the especially since the dis the dishonor could just as could just as well be a fl a fleeing soldier as much as it could as much as it could be something else. Or somebody yeah. who ran off from conscription, yeah, um, and that's because it's very clear that th that even though this is wearing the this is wearing the this is wearing the spirit of um, of Atla, um, I'd say I'd say I'd say it's wearing the spirit more of Atla than of Korra. Oh, it's definitely wearing the spirit of Atla more than Korra. You. It does. It's it's not setting itself up to limit it in that session setup. So if you wanted to, if you wanted to run your own XP kind of kind of setting, um, you could you could more you could feasibly do that. Avatar mm -hmm. Legends, you could not. Definitely. And they very they very clearly don't want you to because they put, because of how much emphasis they put on playing within playing within multiple eras. Without even giving you the option of what if, 
Yeah. Uh, and as a case in point, when it comes to the whole what if thing, um, when I got back into Legend of the Five Rings, after my brief falling out due to second edition that we don't talk about. Um, what? There was a there there was a there was a brief there was a brief event in the card game called One Thousand Years of Darkness, where a um, where where a a crane samurai had ca had come from a dr had come from this um, dream r from this dream realm, where the day of, where the day of thunder was a failure and mm -hmm. Fu Le and Fu Lang had taken over Rokugan. Um. It was present that was going on around the time, and it was presented in the third edition core book as a as a alt as a alternate scenario that you could play with. Um, now it wasn't it wasn't given full detail. It was it was given it was given a pa it was given a half pages half pages worth in the GM's book, mm -hmm. which I'm not which I'm not going to fault them for simply because there was a lot of other stuff to cover. You know, you know, since instead of doing the whole player's book and GM's guide, it's do it's trying to combine both into one book. Yeah, and that includes all the stuff on the clans and the minor clans, and 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 all their schools and everything that entails. So, but when it come when it comes to when it, but um that that put that will always pop in my head about the idea of what of what if. And that's always something that will come to mind whenever someone is presenting some sort of meta setting, of addressing those alternate scenarios. Mm -hmm. Now, it could it could just as it could just as be likely that said alter, that said alternate scenarios um, are a case of, are a case of GM fiat, but even with that. It's sti I think it's still prudent of a designer to put those things in when they're when they're writing a the history of their of their given campaign setting because with because without it you can pr you can give off the impression that e that everything ha that everything happened a certain way and that ends up leading into continuity lockout. Mhm. Mm I'm not saying that's always going to happen, but it is something you should be thinking about. Exactly. And but because because of that it the fact the fact that this is this is using the DNA of Legend of the Elements or of using the DNA of Atla, but not try, not trying to re, not trying to replicate the actual show is what really is what's really going to give this kind of thing a lasting image for me. Um, Legend of the Elements, it you're probably it's I'd say you're, I'd say the majority of the people who are I look at it like this. I believe the majority of the people who are who are currently backing Avatar Legends are fans of the cartoon and are and um. Are get are getting it solely because of that solely because of that fandom. The people who are buying let the people who are buying Legend of the Elements are people who are fans are happen happen to be fans of the cartoon, but also want to role play. Mm -hmm. That's how, that's how I see it, and the big the big question that this is the question that I end up asking on Twitter and I ended up asking t to a few other people is whether or not Avatar Legends is going to be reduced to a coffee table in fi coffee table book in 5 years. Because the because some somebody get somebody getting it just because they're a fan, you know, like some like somebody getting a nut somebody getting a nut a somebody getting say Talisman even though they have no idea how they have no idea of the history of Talisman, they just get it because they just got it because they're a fan of, say, Kingdom Hearts or Batman or Warhammer or what have you. Mm -hmm. Um, of that never lasts. And eventually, the, eventually those sort, eventually for those sort of collectors, it's just gonna it's just gonna sit somewhere in their, in in their he or she cave or or on their or on their shelf or again on their coffee table. It could be argued that I'm that I'm looking too much into this, but that's part of my job to 
to um to examine pop to examine possibilities both short and long term as i've said in the, as i've said in the past and has and as tex has said um children study tactics men study logistics yes um and while i can't while Legend of the Elements was clearly a passion project, so whether so whether or not it makes a bunch of money or or not is is not going to is is not going is not going to be as much of a factor as it is for a for a full on company like Magpie. But can you on can you see them putting out putting out expansion books for Legends or not? I think that if there were more more ideas that came to mind, maybe more playbooks, maybe more alternative move types, maybe some addendums, or even maybe some modules. But from what I see here, you've got everything you need to play in something akin to the Avatarverse. And from there, any group can build what they want. Um, if anything, maybe the, uh, some sort of world book, if you, if you want a more defined setting than what you've already been given, what, but I mean, don't, what, like, wor like world books based on, based on each era? No, more like just a world book based on, uh, the general idea of what the world is and maybe it does explain the history but it doesn't give you a book for each era it's just like hey these are some things that have been known to happen in the world and leaves it at that um because you know defining the eras too too closely gets you the same lockout issue as we've mentioned but to be honest i don't see a driving need if anything it's going to be something that came up later on down the line it's like oh that's a really good idea maybe there should be some additional information for that but this is pretty pretty complete by itself and the th but he, that's that because of that level of completion that's also why the staying power is um is is something is something I'm concerned about. Although I can I can safely say this, um, this is inevitably going to have going to have a bunch of heavily advertised actual plays in the next six months. No, not Legend of the Elements. Um, Avatar Legends will. I have a very strong feeling that none of them are going to be as creative when it comes to bending as they should be. If it's supposed to be adapting the show. Mm -hmm. That's not that's not me making a slide, but it's it's more it's more of um, it's more of the fact that a lot of a lot of peop a lot of people who do the whole oh it's about the story kind of thing have a very dismissive attitude regarding um reg regarding ha regarding setting up fight scenes and setting up combat um in some ex in some extreme cases they see combat as something beneath them. So the idea, the idea of even setting up some Errol Flynn level shit is something that is not going to be considered by by a good chunk of them. This is what this is why one this is why one of the smartest things that was that was done when when growing up was stunt dice. Uh huh. You know, give somebody a tangible reward for com for coming out with crazy descriptors, so it's not just I hit him with my sword. Yeah. But I'd I'd say I'd say when it comes to this, maybe I could retitle maybe I could retitle this valley, the Virgin Avatar Legends versus the Chad Legend of the Elements. Nah, <laughs> too easy. I might do I might I might use that in a tweet though. Hey. <laughs> but that will that will do it for the, for this particular entry into our into the Valley of the Judged. There will not be another Valley of the Judged for a little while. The next one that we have planned, and our next long-term entry, this was ju this was just meant to be a a one-off to tie up a loose end, is going to be on a going to be on a member of the 
um, sto of the Stormforged family, that being Heavens and Heresies, because after the massive, massive faceplant that was um, level up 5e, we need a palate cleanser. Because even I am trying to bring my own form of balance to the world. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody!